Uh, several things that are very striking about your paintings, uh, as as we mentioned, they're all they're, of, they're often populated by falling or floating people. Mm -hmm. And then there's a very uh, significant and very uh, unique uh, quality of color, light, mm -hmm. and obviously the locations where these uh, narratives and the paintings take place. Could you um, tell us how you develop that um, that inv inventory of, of images and ways of, of treating the landscape, ways of treating the figure, and ways of treating interior? How did that How did that come about? Well, uh, an early painting like Apraxic Women, which I did in 1976, introduced this interest I had in the suburban landscape, and likewise also uh, used the, the levitation idea. Then in, by uh, the early 80s, I was really taking that much further in a painting like Double Suicide. I have uh, what would look like a, uh, a high-rise, kind of modern apartment motif looking out on a town like Houston, for example, with other high-rises uh, out through the, uh, the window. And uh, it all came together in a painting like uh, Double Suicide, where I had the levitation. I had the, very, the throbbing sunset, that uh, very intense red sunset going into the night sky. And then the silhouettes of the figures against that, f flying or falling uh, against that uh, um, uh, vibrant color. And that, That's, was in 19, uh, and that painting was in 1982, uh, 81, 82, but it really was really a culmination of a whole series of paintings that came to that, uh, to that uh, point. Uh, in a painting like Blow Dry in, in 1982, I did uh, further, uh, took this idea of the interior and the exterior, playing interior artificial light against ex exterior, nat somewhat natural light, although my light was never very natural, but it referenced sky effects of moonlight or, or uh, twilight or what have you. I'd lived in Los Angeles uh, for a time, and uh, the skies there, the night skies there, really uh, influenced me. Uh, seeing a palm tree in, at, at midnight against this, a, a green uh, palm tree lit with green light against an, the orange sky, because the night sky in, in, in Los Angeles is often, you know, reflecting all the neon and city lights. Uh, that was the kind of effect I was looking for. What about the comic book? Uh, were, you still, were you still drawing off some of the comic book and some of that uh, yeah. earlier illustration yeah. sort of imagery? Well, even going back to the 60s, I'd been very interested in, in R. Crumb. And I'd seen Peter Saul's uh, work in uh, San Francisco Art Institute uh, in 1969, very controversial show he showed. Uh, I, didn't know who he was. I just walked in and saw this work. I happened to be visiting out the there. Vietnam paintings. So the Vietnam paintings, and those are very vibrant paintings in terms of color, and, and also in terms of the sensuosity, the line. Those are very Baroque paintings. Uh, so that lingered in, in the work, certainly. Uh, and I'd created my own style at that point. It was my own, kind of, my, my figures had their own morphology. They, they were kind of squat little people. Uh, they seemed kind of compressed. I was, I was interested in things like the Olmec style uh, in terms of this kind of squat figure with the big head and the strange uh, facial features. So I drew from a lot of different influences to create a kind of a particular body that I was, I was interested in using. And uh, that lasted for, for many years. And yeah. the scale, what kind of scale were you working at at that, at that time? You, in the 70s, I, I'd done big paintings, but in the 70s, uh, a lot of the paintings had been rather small. Then by the late 70s, I was starting to do paintings that were nine feet. By the early 80s, uh, bigger. By 83, uh, paintings that were 11 feet wide. So uh, having always loved uh, film, um, I was thinking of these very elongated canvases that I was working on at that point, six by 11 feet, as being somewhat similar to the cine, cine, Cinerama screen, or the uh, Cinemascope screen, that long uh, peripheral uh, thing that takes in the peripheral vision. I really sought the, um, my immersion in painting. I was always I was looking for a way to immerse myself in this other world. So although you can do it in a small painting, it's much easier when you're standing in front of a vast, you know, a vast canvas. Yeah. And the uh, 
Thelma I, and, and film noir is, has, has, has been an influence in you. Um, how do you, uh, do you take some of your lighting uh, cues from the way film noir is illuminated? Those, are those kinds of, those influences important to you? Film noir is very important uh, for my development. I was conscious of it as a style, as a style. I'd seen it, of course, as a kid, but I, was, I became conscious of it as a style in the mid-70s. They started showing retrospectives. Uh, one of the early ones I saw was Kiss Me Deadly, a uh, Robert Aldrich film. Uh, I'd always loved, even as a child, Asphalt Jungle by uh, John Ford. and. The idea of the night scene, the, the, the illumination at night, uh, strange uh, fog-bound kind of streets with uh, flashes of light uh, had been inter very influential to me. And the shadow, of course, shadow. That all came out of German Expressionism, first painting in a German Expressionist film. So the use of the shadow, a figure in the foreground in total shadow with illumination behind, well, that was a stock part of the uh, language of, of film noir. In a film, in a, in a painting like uh, The Tinder and the Damned from 1985, you can see even the ti my titles of my painting were somewhat influenced by film noir. Uh, uh, my title, The Tinder and the Damned, uh, has a kind of a, a Serkian ring to it. I had uh, seen a retrospective of his work and met the director in the 70s in Berkeley, and he did films like Written on the Wind and uh, Imitation of Life. and. Uh, they weren't so much film noir, but they did have some of that cinematic language, uh, except in Technicolor. Great use of shadow as a psychological uh, language. So uh, film was very important uh, in how I thought about my painting. And the locale uh, in your paintings, the, the hotel and the motel locales, the interior, exteriors, the, mm -hmm. um, the casino image, how did, you, how did you get to the casino image? Well, I'd uh, grown in, up in Texas. My, my family, my father had been a bit of a gambler, and even from infancy, we were often driving out to Nevada to uh, visit Las Vegas. And, uh, even in my child, my mother's family was in California, so spending time in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. And uh, actually, my father had been in the hotel business as well and had started the Holiday Inn. He didn't start the chain, but he well, built he the first built holiday. The first one, right. He right. built the first one in Dallas, right. and he built two or three in Dallas. And some of those hotels in the 50s, I remember them, were absurdly wild. There was one that he built uh, in Dallas that was basically a purple motif. It had stanchions out front with big basins full of fire. I mean, you wouldn't believe how ornate uh, these motels were. They've all been torn down, unfortunately. Some of them are still in Las Vegas. You still get a sense of that 50s over-the-top style. The architect to look at is somebody like uh, Lapidus, who built the Fontainebleau in and, and Miami. That's sort of the iconic, uh, you know, modern, this, this, this kind of a kitsch modern hotel par excellence that would describe that kind of architecture I was interested, which was kind of a degradation of the Bauhaus, but with plenty of curves and swoops and... Uh, what Lapidus called woogles, which were the little kind of lozenge-shaped, uh, distorted lozenge-shaped windows and what have you. But traveling, um, going back and forth, and when I was uh, teaching, I, I started teaching in the early 80s, in, at, both in Berkeley and in Texas. So I even uh, went back and forth twice or three times a year through the Southwest and saw those motels, saw the deserts as well. So I had a context for that kind of uh, material and the idea of the artificial light and so forth. And that helped to develop the, the color too. Was the, was, the, was the color from observation or was it also from, from pulp uh, photography, uh, postcards and so forth? Does, did that play a part in your, your selection of color? Definitely both. I'd be driving through a, uh, a desert at night and I'd come across a motel in Arizona and they'd have a little palm tree along the road lit up with orange on one side and green on the other so you'd have this silhouette against the desert sky of you know the contrasting colors orange and green and so that obviously made its way into my painting there was something so magical and otherworldly about that kind of use of uh, landscape illumination it's considered tasteless now unfortunately you don't see it much anymore but back then you still saw remnants of those multicolored landscape illuminations very interested in postcards. I'd found a big cache of uh, 
True Confidential magazines in an ab abandoned building in the late 70s, which had the kind of the paparazzi look in terms of that's where I had already been interested in people like Fellini, but saw that kind of initial 50s paparazzi, the photographer bursting into the bedroom and catching the people on flagrante and the uh, bed and so forth. And that flash look was interesting to you me. You have a painting that's similar to that with the waiter running in with the skewer. A random room service, random uh, room sort service. of a reenactment uh, using a little different language of, of those kinds of photographs. So very interested in pulp, very in influenced by pulp uh, and, and really third stream degraded forms of reproduction. Yeah. And at that point, were you, were you making photographs for, uh, as, as supportive and as background uh, resource material for your paintings, or were you mainly picking up um, your, your materials from uh, sources like postcards and, mm -hmm. and pulp fiction? When did you begin to use photography or start to develop uh, an interest in photography? I had a real antipathy to photography in college and um, uh, had always worked from my imagination. However, I'd wanted to achieve things in the painting that were photographic effects without using photographs. Then I started picking up reference material just as inspiration. Slowly, I started finding that I could use the reference material a little more, a little more uh, directly. So in a painting like Swamp from uh, 87, I that's an example of a piece where the, the amusement park in the back of the, of the painting uh, was based on the amusement park in Santa Cruz, California. I was always splicing in little uh, fo photo referential material into uh, everything else in the painting is still made up. Uh, well, some of the figures in that, uh, the, the woman's figure in that is, is photo based. So it was always a melding of the imaginary stuff and the photo based stuff, just more as a, you know, uh, uh, another kind of language to, to meld in, but slowly I found myself more and more interested in photographic value in its own right, and that became more and more dominant in the work. 